Hello friends and family, welcome back to Netscode Up channel. Today I'm actually here at your doorstep with a different project and that is a second video to .NET MAUI. Now you know, as soon as you hear MAUI, what comes to mind? That is mobile and web app development. So here we are focusing on both the desktop and the mobile app development. In the previous video or the other video that I did, that's the first one under the MAUI, we talked about how we were able to create a to-do um, application that is running on the Windows and also Mac OS and uh, Android as well. And this time around, we are also going to create a contact application. This contact application is going to handle all the cloud operations, create, read, update, and even search. So um, I have a, I've done it. That is what you see on the screen. So at the end of this video, you must be able to do the same thing as I've done. You know, since it is a starter and I don't want to have database connection or database connected right now. In this first video, we stated the data straight ahead. By this, we're going to use a repository whereby we're going to have a hard coded data and to use that data to create our repositories. If you don't know what your repository is, don't worry. When you get there, you're going to understand. It's very simple and easy to implement. Also, what are the crowd operations? Yes. And also, we're going to use a different approach. In the previous video, that is the to do app, I used um, MVVM, model view, view model approach. But this time around, I'm going to use the other one as well. That is the event driven approach. I'm going to talk about event driven approach too. So you can decide to choose what you want, but I prefer the MVVM and that is what I suggest to you. But I want you to know what the approach is, so you choose your own. Okay, so without wasting much time, let's try to go through what I have on the screen. What are you going to do? Okay, at the end of this video, what you can do. As you know, I am Frederick and I'm going to help you or we're going to do it together. I'm also learning as well as you're also learning. So I learn, you also learn, but I'm going to lead as you learn together okay so if we for for the first video that is a to do app that we created earlier on check the description i've left a link over there you can now click to watch that too that is that video was implemented using the mvvm architecture so if you want to know more about the MVVM architecture you can just read on the internet or you can just go through the, the application watch it and Actually, I've explained it a bit over there and to help you give you the basic knowledge in MVVM and how to also use it. This video too will give you the knowledge in how to use the event driven architecture as well. Okay, so if you're able to watch these two videos, boom, you're good to go. Alright, that's what the application is going to do. I said it's going to perform all the kind of operations and also the sets. I have a hard coded one, so this is the desktop, and this is what the Android, as you can see from the title, Android the emulator. And here I'm using a PSS5. In the previous video or the other video, I used Nezos. I think Nezos. Yeah. Okay, I'm using PSS5. Okay, so you know, if you want to get that, just go to. I went to it in the other video, but let me take a few times also go to that. Now go to tools, and you can see we have uh, Android emulator. And if you can go for the Android SDK or device manager, download one. And now when you come to the debugging, click on this drop down. And you can see the one that you're going to download, you're going to pop up here. So you can see I have Nether 6, I have Pezos, and I have Pezos 5, 5 here. But the Android versions are different. There's 9, 7, and 10. Currently, we have 13, okay? But you know, the workload of my machine, mm, when I run 13, at times it runs slowly so that is what i want to run the 7 9 and 10 okay but if you think you have a powerful machine with a high memory too you can run the 13 and also it's also good as well because that is an update api okay let's go through the application and see what we can do with it so let's go to desktop application so i'm, I'm going to search first you can see from here we have search contact so i'm going to pass in f and i'm going to just have only the f one over here so if i decide to pass in email to let's say you see i have all the email so if i try passing though at gmail because i have all of this so that is a search if i click on this i can go to edit contact so i can edit this contact here name email mobile number john doe let's add m 
So if I click on save contact, now success. So it is safe. Now you see we have Joe Doe. That is a Joe John Doe M. It is what saved. Okay, so you can see the form here. It is edit contact. Take note of this. If I go back and if I click on add, you can see it is the same edit contact. So it means that we have created a content view and that is a control. That is what we have used to for both operations that is the update and also adding of new create okay i left this over there for you to know that we are using a single control to handle the update and the um, adding of new contact okay so here i can add a contact let's see so that is test and test at test dot com so email number is zero one two three four five six seven eight. Save contact, add success, and you can see we have it over here. So test is over there. Have you seen? I cannot click on this. Go to details and now test m test. I can change the email to one two number zero save success test m test email saved. So that is for the windows. Now when you go to the Android, it's the same. But here we I also added the contest menu. So if I want to delete this, see what's gonna happen. I can just right click on each and I'm gonna have edit delete. So if I go to edit, you can see it has also moved to the edit. So if I see John Do More and saved, you can see I have John Do More. So you can see uh, although I can click on this to edit or I can just right click and go for the contest menu and I click on edit Now if I click on delete, what's going to happen? So let's delete this right click delete and you can see success. It is it is off. It is gone deleted Let's go to the Android now here. I can search from this That is a list over here. I can now add if I click on add Let's see so I can add over here and I can go back as well and if i right click this so let's add one so this set so john now we see i have all john over here i can cancel that now let's add the same test here so i'm going to add this test so test as test dot com zero one two three four five six seven eight i'm going to click on save and we see i have the same add success okay and you can see the test yeah you can see it's right here now if i want to delete it here just click and hold and i see what happened because you have edit and delete over right here on top that is the context menu if i click on edit see what happens so if i click on edit you can see i can now edit it i can add john m more then i can now click on save and it is saved now to see update is success and i have it over here and if i click on the same one so let's delete the other one if i click and hold this you can see i can now delete it so delete and success and it is gone so that is it now because i have the add button here and i can click on this to add i can search so that is a crowd operation. So actually the crowd operation here it is create, read, update, and delete. If I click on it, go to details, I can read. Like this, I can read. So I can read over here. I can now update this. That is an update. And I can also add other one over here. I can add a new. That is a crowd operation. Okay. Now aside from that, you know I can also delete it. So right click and I can delete it. So that is a crowd operation. So at the end of this video, we must or we're gonna have the ability or we're gonna learn how to create a simple application okay so don't worry everything is going to be smooth whilst we all learn together all right so let's start uh, by first creating application you know i have a print already so this i'm going to create a new one but do you have to create a new one no i do not so i am going to delete i'm going to clear what we have here and i try to run it again and have an empty one okay so you can also do that, but you can also go in there and create new project, and that's a .NET Maui project. So launch of just studio. So let's see. Watch once I delete all of them and run it again. So this, I'm going to delete this.
Okay, so I'm deleting it. So that is a project. Okay, so we are going to do this project together. And as you know, I'm going to clear this off. All right, so let's see. Right click on this. I'm going to clear off first. Let's wait uh, for the machine to respond. You know, as I said earlier on, the workload of this machine is actually is it enough bigger? Sometimes it does slow down, but you know, I have patient like a class one teacher, so I'm gonna wait <laughs> for you to respond. Then we move on. So I'm gonna right click here now. You see, we have close all tabs, so I'm gonna close all tabs. So go to Solution Explorer and uh, I'm going to delete all this. So I have models. I'm going to clear these models off. So I just have to right click and delete this models folder. Because we have to start everything afresh. Yes, delete it permanently. Also, so while this models is gone, okay, so deleting items. Then I'm going to delete this view folder. This view two is not part, so I'm going to delete this. So views two mask on. So delete views, yes. Okay. So if I go to app shell, let me see the app shell, open the app shell. I want to get it to a default as when you create a new project, what you get. So we can all start together. Okay. I don't want to mess you up mm, to, I don't want you to get lost. You want to start from scratch and move up to where you finish. Okay. So this, I uh, have to delete this namespace. So delete the namespace and here I'm going to use local. And this local. It has to be this main page. So here, clear this main page. So I'm s I save this. So let's explore again. Go to the shell. Then I'm going to clear all this registration. I'm going to save this. So I'll clear this using. Save this. Now, if I go to main page, I have this view, so I'm going to also clear this view up. Okay, so you can see I have this main page. Now, this main page is a hello world that you see. Okay, so I'll leave it there. That is the default one. Then program with CS. So let me and comment this too. Okay, so comment this. We're gonna use that later on, but I have to explain to you before we leave this there. Okay, so don't worry. Let's comment that. Okay, so I think uh, it is okay now. Save this and now let's run this application. So I'm gonna run it. Window machine. Then, okay, so let's wait and see what we have now. All right, so this is what I see. This is the default one. That is what I get. Um, and here, 
maybe here could be a different outing together home could be home yeah i think here is home and uh, you have click me so if i click one time that's the default one when you run this application so this is what you want to get or this is what you want to be using okay so let's see let's go to the main page and instead of this that's the cell contact here default one is home so save this and here must be home so here is supposed to be home okay so this is going to be because that is the title and we set here to to be home all right so because let's have to refresh this i'm going to close this and i'm going to run this debugger mode so if i debug this it's going to run this application again and as soon as i pass in any a change anything here it's going to use signal r i think so to communicate with it component and i'll try to update it that is a hot reload so let's wait okay so you can see it's over here let's resize this more so okay so let's click on general life preview so you want to put the preview here okay so that is a preview okay all right so uh, the first thing that we have to do here is we are going to create pages three pages main page edit and maybe add so three pages we don't want to use the default one that is known as the main page. We want to create because we want to create a contact. So we want to create three pages for that. So in doing that, we first have to create a folder here. So let's add folder. And the name of that folder we're going to add here is going to be views. So add new folder. And let's change this to uh, views. I think so. So views here. Before we can change this, rename this folder, we have to stop the application is running, so we have to stop this so we can uh, change that. Okay, so here it is views. And now let's create three pages in. So right click, add new item. So we're going to select that name Mary. So loading template. Let's wait. Click on dot net Mary. And I will go for content page. But we don't want to use C sharp. We want to use the XAML page. So let's use this. So let's rename this as main. I can say main contact page. So main contact page dot XML XML. So main contact page. Let's click on add to make sure it is content page. Okay. But the name is main contact page. So let's add. And aside from that, we're going to create two more. So edit and add. So it is now creating. Let's create the other one too. So view, let's add new item, the same content page. And now instead of this going to be add contact page. So add contact page, let's click on add. Let's add the next one or the last one. That is an edit. So new item and let's go in for make sure you have content page edit contact page so edit contact page dot xaml then click on add so when you check solution explorer this folder you can see we have three pages here three pages 
Now each page has a XAML page that is a UI and has a code behind file. The code behind file is what it has a CS. CS stands for C sharp. So you can see it has one, a add, edit, and main page. Here this is what we want to do. We want to set our main page here to be an edit page. This uh main page. You want to set it as soon as the page loads. It should load this main page. So how are you going to do it? Let's go to the page here. That's an app shell. So you can see there's an app shell. Click on this app shell. And we have to add the reference here. So this XML XAML. Then add NS. That's the stand for namespace. Give it a name here as views. You can give it a name as you want. So views here. Then C L R dash namespace. Type in namespace. Now this namespace. You know the project here it is Maui. So my project is Maui here dot contact okay so my dot contact and now so the namespace is spelled um, wrongly so namespace is it correct now okay so we have Mari oh namespace still spelled wrongly wow so space whoa okay so we see from here we want to navigate to so namespace Mari dot so my contact then we go for view so we see it, it has pop up here to so the view so click on this to get this namespace added so it means the folder here it is now open you can have access to all the files here so instead of this shell okay we can actually make a copy of this then control k and c let's comment this and now let's paste this here so we paste this now instead of this data template this looker we can change this to what that is the view the view that the view that we set up here views now as soon as we set up the view colon you can see we have this main page main content page and now set let's grab this and now put it is it put or paste yeah paste it there so that's the way to set up a main page okay so we have this but there's one thing left that we have to do the same app shell now let's go to the cs file and let's register the route first so here we go in there to register to create awareness of this route or this page that we have created so register each in the routing system okay so that the computer application get awareness of these components of these pages so in that we say routing dot and that is a register there must be a pop-up so routing dot register route think here i'm having a problem here so dot register route that is it so register route then instead of specifying exactly the name of the page we can use name name of so we're registering the first one as what main contact page so main contact page now this contact page i think it is it's unknown here so control period let's add the namespace here that is um, using marie.contact dot views i think so now it's over here so dot views let's add that to the namespace so you can see it has added over here and it is off now this registration it is like a dictionary in c sharp it has the key and its value now we have this over here so that is a key what is the value and the value that we're going for it is the type of and the same type of so name of so main contact page then you close it like this so no you don't have to bring name of 
the time path is set so there is no name of anymore okay so this is the first one let's grab this because we have how many pages so far we have three so let's grab them copy and paste is so nice because it makes us work faster than hmm, typing it yourself so main contact page and uh, instead of this main here is going to be add let's grab this let's paste this and now here it is edit so we can grab this paste this so let's save this now let's go to the main contact page so that's the main contact page now in here we write like this is a label so let's say um let's write here this is main contact page okay now that is a title so contact page or you can write in my contact my contact okay let's save this let's run this application and see the the output here so let's click on this to run yeah so we see that the application is now running and we have the main contact page as our main page as soon as the page application loads you can see the page gets loaded so we have now overridden the main page from the app default to a customized one as main contact page the title for that page is what my contact yeah so the next thing that we are planning to do here is to create our repo and our models you know when you talk about models that is what we're going to base on to create a property such as um, contact name location email address telephone number and etc so the thing that we need to put together to form the contacts what we call the models let's go in there and i'll create a folder here and now let's create it over there as model so let's stop this the debugging so listen explorer and right click on the project click on add new folder and now that is models so with these models as i said earlier on before we get into this you know we are not connected to database yet we are using the hard coded data to get or to create this application okay so the data that you're going to create are going to be in memory storage so we're going to store inside the memory of our computer yes so that's what we're going to do but maybe later on we'll talk about how to catch the database but let's first have this concept first and later we can now move on to joining or adding database sql or um, sqlite I think so for applications as your light it's the best so let's right click on this let's add a class the class that I'm going to add here is going to be contact so make sure you have class selected now this contacts we need let's make this public first we can clear all these costs we don't need them we're going to we're not going to use any of these so public class now the first thing that we're going to do here p r o p click on the tab key we have the format generated are you not coming tab okay so the first one that we're going to do you need is what the id because each contact must have an id to separate from the other one also the next one we need string and this string could be name okay so that is name then let's add email address so that is also a string and uh, i want us to clear this off so let's set here as email and the last one this is an int 
and here it's going to be phone number okay so phone number so that is the property that you want to have under a class called contact let's go to solution explorer right click on the save models click on add let's add another class here and on this class i'm going to uh, create here or the file i'm going to create here going to be contact repository so let's say contact repository so at the beginning of the video i made mention of repository and i said if you don't understand don't worry by the end of this video you're going to understand your repository so this is the time now now repository it is um a way of organizing your code putting all your methods in a separate class whereby you can call that repository and grab the content of it and utilize it or use it normally in c sharp when you create a repository you must have the interface and the implementation okay but in this we are creating a static repository meaning that this static repository is going to be called once and it's going to be stored so anytime that you call this method it, it gets to the stored one and then grab the content for you that is static because it is not dynamic you create once and it gets stuck in the memory let's see maybe when you try to get into a lot about this uh, with the practicality you're going to understand what actually this means so let's forget about the talking you know programming particularly is the most important thing not the talking so for now keep in mind that it is a way of organizing your code in a one separate file so you can make your call to get content that you want or a method that you want so you can now clear this off okay so this repository that we have first of all let's make this public because you want to access it outside the scope we make this as public right here now the first thing that you're going to do here is you're going to set the data a list a list of this contact class that you have created okay so let's say public let's set a static and this static is going to be list so a list of contact and we say contact list equal to new list of contact then in here we can open up so we are populating a contact list here so we are saying a list meaning i enumerable a list of contact we create a new instance we give it a name as a contact list is a static so it is created once and stored in the memory then you're going to populate the list or class list you know i have this already so i'm going to copy that but you can just pause this video and i'll try to grab that i have this here so let me see if i can grab that do i have it oh so unless i go back and check yeah i think it is here so i got it i'm going to copy this here and now let's go to our page and i'm going to paste it one so two three four it's a lot right so let's try to edit this so this is john doe frank hook frederick asante um john doe again so it is going to be james maybe james more and you can say andrews hughes let's give a sample name so rick mass we have um let's add ladies as well mabel respond any name at all that you have okay so i have gifty i'm gonna say kicks can have franklin Davis more is like um, Genesis I 
the great and we can have like Simon Peter no so sets hmm set clean okay now I'm gonna copy this and let's change the uh, email so with their first name we can now change the email one clean to this gifty to this Mabel to this then Rick to this and use to this James to this Frederick already said okay so now they are phone numbers you have one two three zero one two three zero two four and over here we can now change it to seven four eight five so any number at all that you think is gonna be appropriate you can pass it over there the last one okay so now that, that is the uh, data now let's change the id so one two three and here gonna be four we have five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve all sets so we save this now let's create a method to get data from this list let's assume this is a database right so how do you get data from this how do you perform the crowd operations and that is what we need to do now so let's perform the crowd operations so the first one all these are going to be static files okay because we are not having actually from database so you want to create the method and store it at once anytime that you want to go in there and grab it you don't want to be creating an instance of it all the time no our memory is not enough <laughs> specifically my memory is not enough to do that so let's make it a static so first of all let's see um that is a public static as you know void or oh, let's say first let's get list so list of contact and now this i'm going to say get contacts so get our contact and now this i'm going to use the lambda expression the short one so i'm going to say um contact list this means return contact list dot or just return contact list because it is list already so that's all now what what do i have here we have a public static um list of contact and that's the name and we have contact list okay so it is saying that cannot convert collection list to this let's see what we can do here okay all right so let's wait for a while and you see that errors are gone so it means we are calling this now this is the same as this so let's grab this and when you use this lambda expression it makes it one line of statement but you can just control period you can use the block one block method and this are going to be so a list of this they're going to return contact list so instead of adding this return we use this lambda expression to set the return so this lambda here uh, represents this return and when we do that since it is just one line of code we can take off this block off so that's what we see you can see it's very simple so when you call this method it's going to get out the whole list now the next thing that we want to do here so this is get so let's use this is get method okay so get now let's go for so this get let's go for read okay so read you know when if we want to perform this crowd operation now crowd here means what well, that is a create read 
update and the last one is what delete so this is read so we have get and this get here it is so let's make it as read so this is read one because it is all so reading all now let's go to read two and reading individual so let's see individual so that is single one and the same public static this time around it is just contact okay contact and it is get contact by id then we pass in and id here so we open the bracket so this is read two okay now it is get contact by id so reading a single contact and i pass the id so we can say that so var result is equal to contact list dot first or default okay so the first or default then we can now pass in this x lambda expression so where x dot id so this id referring to the list here this id is equal to the id coming in so we are grabbing a specific one when we are done we can now return so we can say return what results get by id that is it now so that is a that is read now let's go to create so let's have create here so this is great and that is a public static okay so this is public static this is going to be void and add contact because when we add it we don't want to return anything so then here we call the contact and now we call this contact object so there's an object we open this and now we can say that if this contact is not equal to now okay we want to check maybe you can check and see if it is found already okay so let's say if it is not equal to now then we can open this then we want to say that but we can check if even name is there or email is the same or your phone number is the same we can check that that's the validation here to validate before you add but for now let's skip that let's go the simplest or the simple one for you to get understand but later on we can now dive into it to check for um if we did the name the names are the same the email is the same or the phone number is the same it means that we have already added that okay or maybe you can do that as well for now so let's try one and see let's try the email so if the email and phone number are equal to what we have there it means the data the contact has now been added already because um you can use one email for two people yeah so let's use the email so we say var so check email is equal to contact list dot first or default s lambda x dot email so dot equal so dot equals to the contact coming in contact object dot email so we say if so check email is not equal to now it means it is found maybe we can display something like let's see shell dot current dot let's say display alert then we can say so let's use error as a title then the message here it is so contact already added then we can use an a button as ok button and close this that is when the name is found okay so with a single line this is what we can do so we can now close this close this 
then here so if it's not equal to now so let's use if it is now we're going to perform this so control k and d if it is now it's going to perform this okay then we can just perform this and return we can return okay so let's put this on a line here but if you want to put this on a line here unless we use this bracket so let's use this bracket here to speed up things okay so return then if not then this is what you're going to do we're going to say um contact list dot add this contact okay but you know it is only database or sql database or sqlite that is where it automatically populate the next id now in here we have to do it ourselves because you know id we have to perform id either or the person entering the name or adding the new contact should not supposed to add id like you your id one id two id three we have to do it ourselves now see we have a default data set over here and the last id is 12. so this is what we can do instead of before we add this we can say that you can say that val let's say max id okay so this max id is equal to let's grab this so contact list dot max then in max you can pass in this lambda expression x dot id so here we are grabbing the id id of this that is 12. so instead of this var we can make it as end because it's always an integer so it is actually good to specify what you want than to use a variable so int max id and now in here this is what you want to do so contact dot id is equal to so max id plus one so anytime this is called we're going to add one then we add this after adding this we can display this message as okay so you can say success and uh, contact added so contact added done okay and okay that's all so maybe after displaying this message we can now um locate the person we don't happen to stay there again okay so maybe because you know that is an add so after adding yeah we can decide to keep it as this because we want to have the button in front as add as soon as i click on it it stays the same page so display this message success and that is it okay so that's an add so when you call this method it's going to perform that you didn't have to provide this object and that's what you are done so we have create so let me grab this on top so that is create we have a read so let's go for the update now with the update this is update and that is also public static void and you can say update contact and we must pass in contact here and its object as contact we open this so first of all let's make a search so var contact is equal to contact list okay now instead of doing that we can just go in there and now grab this let's paste this contact list and you can now clear this off so default here you want to use this id okay so this id equals contact dot id so let's see 
So we're back on time that ID is equal to this contact dot. Can we have an ID here? So it is saying that okay, this contradicts is ambiguous. So let's see. Let's use result. So result. Then we say not eight if. It is just simple if so if result is not equal to now then this is what you want to do now you have the id so you can say that result over here so we say result dot name is equal to contact dot name then you say result dot the next one so result dot email is equal to contact dot email now here we can use auto mapper but we don't have enough or we don't have more properties so let's move on okay no confusion let's focus on this and result dot phone number is equal to contact dot phone number so here we need not to populate we need not to add the id because the id is there the id user the person editing can change the id okay so the id is set automatically so we need not to set any id here so we need name email and phone number because that's what we have in our model name email and phone number yes so when we are done with this then that is it you know updating is very simple because it is not a database whereby you can say save changes and do, 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 do that no so that is what let's set up um let's display message here so success contact updated done then we can go back to let's copy this so paste this here so dot go to async and now we can pass in two dots to the local to the home page okay so after adding this to here let's navigate to the home page as well there are two things involved okay so let's use one here so that you know the two Either you use it or use an absolute path. So what is an absolute path? Let's try here with an absolute path. So this is absolute path. Now this is an absolute path. Let's try to see. So you have to use string interpolation. Then no, not yet. Okay. Then we can now set this name of and this name is going to be main contact page so main contact page okay so this name contact page control period we have to use this models okay, so we have to include that to the name space but that is folder where this is found okay so name of that is a absolute path if you want to skip all this then use two dots mm -hmm. so i'm showing the two weights this one and this other one they all have the same end okay that's an update now the last one left here we have um create update now the last one is delete so that's what we can do not public static and that is void so delete contact and i need to pass in just an id you don't need to get all the stuff again so let's make a search let's grab this here let's make a search okay we get from the tab to see if the id it is found if id is found then 
let's remove that so contact list over here dot remove passing this result then contact deleted deleted done then go back to the main page okay or even here you can decide to skip this because you're not going to go back to your you're still going to stay at the home page whilst you delete. The last one that we have to do, um, it is the search. This is not part of the CRUD operations because for the CRUD operations, we are done implementing the, their methods. But we have to search. As you know, we have to get a search bar where you can search contact. Because when you have a list of contacts, maybe hundreds, thousands of contacts, and if you are looking for a specific contact, looking through it one after the other, you can see it's going to take you a lot time but when you have the search button you click on it and as soon as you're done you're going to have this object or the contact filtered so let's create that to implement it uh, and make application uh, interesting okay nice to use as well all right so we create also a static method and this is search so public and that is static here we're going to return a list of contact okay and this list we say search contact we're going to pass in a string and that's going to be filter that's a filter so filter we open it over here and um, we say var contact is equal to okay so we're going to store it here as a list so this Okay, so contact equal to, then we say contact list dot first or default. We don't use first or default. So contact list dot where, let's use a where x dot, no, x lambda expression, you have x dot. First of all, let's search the name dot name, okay. So x dot name dot maybe we can use we can use lowercase okay or yeah let's use lowercase dot to lower okay so dot to lower but before we move into this I want us to use let's get in for where x string dot is now so where it is not now a white space and uh, let's find and x dot name to lower okay x dot name to lower so this is the lower dot contain so it contains this filter filter dot to lower okay so here we are saying that if oh so let's bring this this white space and that is the x dot name dot to list So you first check the name, you first check if the filter here, if it is found in the name. So this is what we want to do. We can now grab this. We can use all here, but it's going to make it long. So let's grab this and now let's check. So here we can say that. So if contact is equal to now it means it is not found here or we can use or the same contact here contact dot count is maybe less than or equal to zero it means it isn't found if so 
then you want to perform another operation here okay oh so this is the contacts but if it is found then what do you want us to do then we can say else so let's let this one use if else return this contact return this contact so if it is it is now then we say contact again is equal to this control k and d so if it is now then you want to perform this okay now instead of using this name we want to use the email and here we use email that's all and we want to check also check the phone number so we can also copy this let's paste this here so if the same contact here is equal to now nah, then perform this but with this we're gonna grab the phone number so phone number we don't have to use dot where okay let's see what we can do here we don't have to use this no white space so let's clear this so where x dot phone number so phone number no lowercase so and here what is it saying it is saying that int does not contain um this okay so does not contain but we can say dot equal to then we can pass in this filter okay so where x now this filter here if you see that it is string here so let's use int dot pass then we pass in this filter and here we close like this we convert it to less than return so when you pass in zero okay you're going to check all number which have zero and grab that zero two four zero one two zero two nine you're going to grab them so if it is if this it is now then it's going to perform this so this output okay if it is now then it could perform this okay then let's see because this is what we are saying now the first one we have to get the whole name we search through the contact to find the name if the name is not found there it means it could be email we're going to search through this email if email is not found there then it could be phone number we're going to search through this okay but in case we search through email and it is found meaning this statement is going to be false then it's going to return this contact when we search through this with the email and it is found this statement is going to be false so it's going to skip this and search through this so if the last one is execute there's no return so let's set a return or return contact so that's going to return this when the last statement here executes okay so that is our search we have a search beautiful done we are searching through email phone and phone number email name and phone number okay now let's minimize each we can hide it we want to make a repository very simple okay so we have it done beautifully now the next thing that we want to talk about here is how to implement this because when you run the application now nothing going to happen 
this is the code behind file so we have to create an ui so we can relate the ui to this and the next thing i'm going to do here is to create a page now we have created our page already so how do you call this repository method and display them in the ui also we're going to talk about control how do you create control now bear in mind that i'm going to talk about what event driven is so when i get to where i need to use the event driven i'll explain event driven for you to understand the reason why we are using this and as i said earlier on i kept mentioning you're going to use event driven event driven is what actually is event driven approach now you see i took almost some minutes to create this let's go for a short break uh, sip some water and i'll come back and now let's continue welcome back again so we are going to create our ui that's the user interface currently when you run this application you see nothing the screen is just blank as we started because what we've done here is a code behind file and this code need to be called so let's create a ui whereby we're going to call this method the pi tree to get rendered let's go to our main page that's the main contact page that's what we set our customized page now now in here we want to get our display list so let's clear this vertical stack layout and here we want to use list list view so list view now this list view let's set a background it should have been background color so let's use transparent you can set it to any color that you want okay but for now you want to use transparent and now here that is the name so as i said earlier on i said when i get to the name driven event i'm going to talk, uh, talk about that is the first and the first one that you've done all controls all views that have x name this is the name driven now what do i say is the name driven um when you create button you can set up a name over there now that name you can now go in for an event that is when the button is clicked we call the name and attach click to it that's the name driven it is not an um, mvvm whereby the buttons or the event are going to be generated by a relay command or i command for us here we have to specifically or um yeah specify the name and also the button click an event which is going to call when the button is click let's see the first one that we know here we've seen here is the x name now this x name let's see if actually can talk um something about this name driven or event driven now with the event driven we can say that an event driven architecture um, this it uses an event to trigger and um, and communicate between the corporate services and it is common in this modern applications so when a button is click a uh, communication must establish and this event driven can render that maybe let's go through um whilst we we get to it you're gonna have more knowledge insights in that so let's give it a name now this name is let's use um i like to use this xml okay to let us know that it is coming from this xml so let me use this xml okay contact list this is the name that i am giving to this now with this name that we have here the next thing that we can do here is let's have in between let's view dot data template so let's have an item template first item template first over right here then we can have the data template inside this item template now inside here you want to call for test cell now this text cell it has an attribute that is test and this test you want to bind to 
you can decide to specify just the name or we can say path okay so path here is equal to name now where did i get this name from this name is from the model remember that the contact model has a name attribute and that's what i am binding up to that is the main page here but you know before we can bind that we have to we have the page added here let's see so it is added we have the view from this main contact page okay so let's move on so once we have this with this list view we specify the text cell we also have another is the attribute that we can specify and that is a detailed so this detail and we can specify it also to binding and here let's use email so we are specifying just an email here we are not specifying the path you're not adding path just email okay so binding then we have email specified here okay now this what we want in this list for now let's go to a code behind file in this main content page of xml so you can just right click here and then go to view code so when you go to view code what are the things that we need to do to get this first of all we have to i want us to group them <coughs> so let's see let's create a method that is private and the name of the method here let's say private void and that is load contact okay so this load contact that we are creating let's say var um, result is equal to new do you have to use yeah let's go straight and use that so new observable now why are we using this observable so observable collection observable means it is watching when you make any update it update the view very simple that's why you need to use the observable collection so observable collection is it here that's the first one observable collection now here looking for a t value and this t value is a contact value okay so this contact we can pass in this contact repo so contact repository so contact repository then we can call this get all contact so let's see now it is saying that this is an ambiguous so we need to specify uh, specify it here country plus period then let's use a fully qualified name as models dot contact so let's pass in models dot contact so when you call this method it is storing the list of contact gotten from this method from this repository under this result now you know you've set the name of this contact when you go to this list as this xml contact list so you can just grab this name here go to the main contact page over here and now let's set this so we say dot then item source is equal to result so this is a method now let's call this method as soon as the page loads so we are calling this method when the page initializes let's save this now let's run this application and see all right so you see that as soon as we load that we have the list set up over here that is a name the email here is a detailed so have you seen but you can see when you check it, it is nasty so we have to apply some padding and some margins and the spacing to beautify this let's go to the main page of xml now here this is what 
I want us to do. Let's add row height and uh, I cannot pattern as well. So let's see. So row height, we can set this row height maybe 50. We can set margin to maybe 10. We can set font size. Let's see if size can be set up over here. Can be set over here, I think so. So with this tail cell, let's see if we can have a font size specified. Let's see. Can we have font size here? Yeah. So let's maintain as it is. Save this. And maybe we can also add some things more before we run it. So we can close this. Let's close this here. Now, whilst we have this, we can also add something like separator. We can set this to silver or any color at all that you want. Yeah, so I think uh, this will be great while you have set the pattern. That's the margin over here. So let's save this. Now let's run this. Okay, so you can see it is beautifully arranged. We have space between, we have margin as well. Yeah, so I can now click and I can get it selected. Okay, so that is this, this one. Okay, so if I click on this, if I tap, what should happen? Let's talk about this. Yeah, so if I click on this, I want to open it to the edit, meaning I want to edit. So I click on this and I can read or edit over there. Okay, so let's see how to work on this. So we can do that by using an uh, item selected. So in here, You can go in for an item selected. Okay, so this item selected, you can see it is a new event handler. So that's what we call as the event driven. Mostly it is being called using an event. So this selected that we have clicked or selected, when you go to the C sharp page, you can see the event has not been created here. It means when that event triggered, this is going to call this method. Whatever thing that you pass in here is going to be called. Okay. So we can also add one more. Let's go back to the main page. Aside from item selected, we can go for item tab. So let's go in for another so an event here. Now, when an item is tapped or is selected, what should happen? So when you select an item, we can just navigate to the next page and I'm passing the item ID. Okay, so let's see, we go back to the main page. Let's see up here. Now when item is selected, that is what you want to do. So we can first check. So if this XML contact list dot selected item, okay, it's not equal to now. We want to navigate so we can use await shell dot current dot go to async 
then in here let's use string interpolation let's pass in this name of now name of what that is an edit contact page and we don't want to pass in only just the name rather we want to specify the id of the item so that we can search it over there okay so let's use also string interpolation here then let's use this models dot contact so this models dot contact we are typecasting this what are we typecasting we are typecasting the list or the the id selected so we call xml we need to cut this put it here okay then there must be also here because when you type cast it must be in the fold uh, bracket like this okay so xml that selected okay so dot um, let's use an ID so we want to grab the ID of the item but when you select an item from here we want to typecast this to the object that is a model and now when you typecast it to the model we can have access to the ID everything here and in that we are specifying only the ID as a query string to pass into this edit page component okay or the content so that is what we are doing here then once you are done we can now close like this so it means we have a key here that we have to store as a query string let's go to this page now before we move on to that uh we can let's set this one tab let's set xml contact list dot selected item records now let's save this let's go to the edit page here now let's navigate to the cs where i click and go to view code and now in that first of all we have to specify a query string on top here so this queries property and this property name of let's use name of let's use contact id although we haven't created that but we're going to create it then what is the string coming in the string is an id remember that this id was what we specified from this main page this id so in here let's have a public string then we can grab this and paste it here so this property we want to have set so let's open this set and let's create a public variable to hold all contacts here so you want to say private and that is models.contact then we say contact so this contact that we have created let's store the variable contacts equal to let's call the contact repository dot then get contact by id then we have to since this string here coming in is an is an is a string because you know this query id is a string and here we need to pass in an integer so let's convert it to integer so we need to use n pass then value so this id when it comes here gonna be the value you store it over here okay so once we are done 
Now, don't worry about this. You have to restart because you know we are running the application and it is it needs to restart. So when we, when you close this, it's gonna go off. Okay, so when we restart it, it is gonna go off. All right, so now we store the output from this uh, repository. We get it over here. Now, how do you set it to the view? We have to create a control first. So in the control, that is what you're going to use to set and also get the values. So let's pause here. Let's go to Solution Explorer. Now in the same views, let's add a folder. And maybe this, we can set it as controls. Let's add new item and on this new item that we're going to add select on the Mary and on this Mary you will see we have content page content view so we are going to create this content view make sure you select that example page so example view so click this and you can name this as maybe since it is contact so contact control then click on add so this control that we are creating is going to be reusable we're going to use it multiple times in adding and also editing editing of contact so in here let's clear this vertical stack layout and in here, that's we need to provide or specify our rows and columns, and also our inputs, our forms. Let's say our forms. So let's use grid. Now, in this grid that we're going to use, we have to specify a row definition. So, talking about the row height, we need, let's use auto, we need six. So, let's say auto. Auto, auto, so how many rows that we need that's what we are specifying here they are going to be auto 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 okay so we need one for the label and eight components the label and the components so this is for name and this is for email so this is for phone number this is for phone number okay so for now let's maintain the six now uh, here let's specify column definition and you can say we need only one column so you can say auto so we are done with the grid let's also specify spacing maybe um, row spacing you can say 10 then under 10 here maybe imagine to 10 okay now let's go in for label and on this label this test let's set it as name default one the row is zero the column is zero so you maintain it maybe you can specify font size as maybe 18 then this is what we can do we have label name great row that is zero column to zero right because we have only one column so they're going to be on top and the row here is zero column to zero let's go for entry so this entry it also has the same row and the same column so row zero column also zero because that's the first one so here 
let's specify grade dot row so grade dot row and this is gonna be one because here it is zero so this is one so you want to have label name then the text box okay so we have name and this is one let's grab this and paste it under one for phone number so this is email and the row here it is two this is phone number and the row going to be three okay so you can specify address so let's have button so we have many rows we have we have one two three so one two three four five six so three six you have to add that one for a button so auto and this one gonna be a button so this button let's have test as save so you can say save contact okay now that is a save and now maybe um with this button we can have great dot row so great dot row and it's gonna be is it four we have this is so label one over here this is great dot row let's specify it over here so so this here it is zero this is one let's grab this so this is two and that is three this is four and that is five so because we have zero one five and here gonna be six okay so we have this now let's save this so when you run this you're going to have a beautiful form let's see so let's run that and see click on this to run it so since this is a control when you run you can't even see this unless this control has been used in a component uh, that is a content page so let's see now um this button let's create an event one so you say when it is clicked but before that let's specify the name of this so x then let's give it a name here and this is btn let's say btn save yeah so that is it you can see nothing happens here so let's close this and this is btn contact save so that is the name of the button now when it is clicked let's generate an event so when it is clicked generate new event handler so fail to create it button save clicked okay so let's go to now contact control right click let's go to the code and you can see the handler has now been created here okay we can now save this and let's go to the control this page as we are now and we need to specify some events so on top here let's specify public event and that is an event handler so the first one is going to be string because we're going to use that to handle all errors okay so let's use an error and now the next one the same public event and we say event handler and now this time around it's going to be argument that an event asks so this is event asks and that is on save 
so we have this event created now let's initialize this but before that you know when we come to the control of the ui we must have name for the various component so this entry now this is name so we can have x name and this is entry name this is address so email so you can have x name that is entry email and this is x name and you want to have entry no this is phone number so this is phone phone number okay so now we have this let's go back to the c sharp code and now we need to set these entries so that we can grab the content anytime that you are because you know this control we're going to use it both in add and edit so in order to do that we can set a public string the first one is name and now with this name we have set so it is public so this set you want to say return so entry name entry name dot test okay so this is supposed to be get and this is return so ret return entry name dot test then we need to set it as well so set entry name okay dot test is equal to the value so control k d and here let's see what we can do so we have this get set and we have this over here so let's see what we can do with it so this must happen not inside this button click so we can now cut this control k d this must happen on top here and also let's grab this let's paste this this for email and that is for phone number so this phone number is an integer okay so now email you can just copy this so that is email and here let's copy this email and instead of this entry name it's supposed to be entry email let's set it entry email now this is phone number so this phone number and that is phone number okay so set return dot test equal to this and entry let's see um it is saying that cannot this is get dot test cannot convert this so when we get to phone number now saying ret return type is an integer we must convert this so let's return int dot pass then we pass it here then here too let's convert this to two string okay so it is now set we have phone number email and name set over here let's save this now when this button is clicked that's what we want to perform uh, save um here but before that here we can check this or oh. this is what we have to do 
so when this button is clicked that is submit okay when it is clicked that is what you want to do we want to say and save let's put this dot invoke so for now we can decide to take off this air out okay so now this invoke let's pass this as sender and now the event okay so that is this one now let's go back to the page and let's see what we can do so let's go to the edit contact page c sharp the code behind file and now accept this from this control so you go to this edit contact page is a code behind file now let's go to the main page so let's click on this now when you right click and i'll go to view markup we have this. so we're going to clear this and that is what we need to do we need to add this edit contact page so let's use this control but before that let's add a namespace so let's add a namespace here and xml ns that's the namespace so type in give it a name and the name here since it is control let's say control then it's equal to clr dash and now we pass in namespace so namespace and within namespace we need to use Maui dot so we see it's over here we're going for controls so we inject this all right so in here let's specify the control then we say contact control okay then this contact control we have to specify some few things in it the first one let's name so this is contact let's say control that is a contact control after specifying the name we have to specify this event and save event we have to generate a new handler okay so that is this one let's go to edit page dot cs and where is it so you can just right click here and then go to view code and now uh, yes we have the handler being what created or generated here now whilst we get this data we can now set the contact control so whilst you grab the data from the user from this angle we get it id from the query string we make a search from database call this uh repository get the data here then let's see so if let's say if contact is now equal to now okay that is what you want to do this so contact control dot then you can get the name here is equal to so contact dot name then the next one contact control dot email so then the next one we have contact control dot phone number right so let's see contact control dot phone number is equal to contact dot phone number all right so we have now populated this as soon as i click on this uh, button it's going to get me the list of these contact now with the save button then anyway, let's save this now let's see what we can do let's run this application and see 
So I click this run it. So our contact is now loaded. Let me make it as a phone size. That's a phone screen. So I click on this John Doe. And uh, you can see we have the page over here. So you see we have name, email address, we have phone number, and we have button here. Right. But if you check this, let's go back. Let's go for James Moore. So this is James Moore. We have email address, phone number, and a save button. Let's see this too. Okay. So this is, let's set this test box to 60. So let's go to the contact control. And now let's go to the markup. So here, instead of specifying column as auto, we can specify 60. Let's save this. And now let's see. Sixty. Can we add star? All right. So now we have it beautifully well done, beautifully. Yes, we have a button. So if I move it upwards, that's what we have. So you can just go back, click on Mabel Roseman, and you have the details here. So you have name, everything set because we did that in the edit page here. You set up over here. So if I click on this button, can if I click on this button, this event executes, but there's nothing here. So what do you have to do here? Let's see. That is what we are going to do. So here we have to populate the data. So yeah, instead of setting setting up, we have to turn it upside down. Yeah. So this is what I want to do. I can just grab this and now paste this here. And um, instead of this, I can say I'm going to cut this. It's equal to because you know we have this contact here created on top here. So as soon as I um, use that, it means this object here is now and we are populating it here. But you know that we have the ID set here because this contact contains an ID. And as soon as you get data from the list repository, the ID too is part of this. So as soon as you get here, this we have ID, it is filled already. So you need to populate the rest because for the ID, the user did not have to change it. I think this is clear. So let's cut this. And now here, paste this assign. Contact that phone number. Cut this. Paste and assign. And assign okay so that is what we have to do and after doing this we have to call this the repository so let's call contact repository dot and we have a method called add contact and i'm passing this contact so this is not this is an update rather so dot update contact but you know so let's see if we're going to update now this update contains a message already so as soon as it has done let's see what happened so let's say Rosemont let's add M let's click on save contact and now let's see if it's going to execute it so we have to let's save this again let's go back okay so the contact updated done but if you can see that Rosemont brown here it is m but when you check here the m doesn't pop up why because the list view needs to reload okay to clear up the old stuff and I'll get the new ones how do you reload let's use uh, the next one page life cycle that is known as on appearing so when it appears we call this observable object collection then it get the current data that we have and display it inside the, the list view i think that will help us achieve the aim so let's go to the main page and now let's go to the view code so here 
we have to use so let's pass in an override and we need to use this do we have on appearing yes so this let's call this let's cut this from this area and now paste it here so save this and now let's see so always rebuild so it needs to restart this because of we have this life cycle so you need to restart it so that's why it is restarting so let's wait <coughs> all right so now it is loaded so let's see now john doe and now let's add m so save now you see the m has now reflected here maybe a rosemont let's see hues and let's change the email to hues and the phone number we can add save and that updated now you see we have it over here so the update is done now the one left here it is an add so you see so this is what edit it and you can see there's an edit contact page right here so this edit contact page is what we want to do so let's go to the that is it now instead of this edit contact let's take up the page here yeah, edit contact so <clears throat> now you're done with the edit and the update let's see with the addition adding contact let's go to the view here now we have to also specify the same control so i'm going to go to this and copy or grab the namespace you can also do that let's go to page and now here paste it so instead of add contact page we can say add contact yes and now with this you can also grab the control like this grab this go to the add contact page and we can also paste this here control k and d let's format it well so this is the name is contact control and now on save the same thing that you want to call we want to call this method okay so we save this now let's go to the add go to view code we need to because we have an event error here so we need to generate this handless so add page now this is the name so we can specify the name as contact control again now on save let's clear this because we copied and pasted that's why so let's generate this now we save this and now we go to the page here you see we have it over here and when we come here we need to populate this so we can say the new contact okay is equal to new then we can say model dot contact then we can specify name so here is supposed to be model then name so let's see control period so let's see why having this so new contact okay so we have name name is equal to and that is a contact control dot name okay then the next one email is equal to so the same contact control dot email then next one 
phone number so a new contact now I want to check this contact email and phone number right so let's grab this add page phone number is equal to contact control dot phone number okay now let's see so in here we we are creating new contact then we are populating this so contact does not contain so new let's see if you pass in model dot contact all right so let's specify this models dot contact and that's an email here okay so you can now close this so after populating this then we can now call this contact repository so contact repository dot add then here we pass in this new contact that's all so that is all that we need to do here for us to add now let's see so when this runs let's run it and see whether we can add new contact so click on this to run it you know one funny thing is there's no button here to click on to to add right <laughs> so let's create a button here so let's go to the main page and now in here this is what i want us to do so with the list view let's grab this list view and now let's use grid so grid let's use row definition and the row definition here auto and let's specify here to as auto then we can add star then column definition let's specify it as auto or let's say let's use dot 70 star then dot 30 star okay and let's set row spacing 10 uh, you can also set margin 10 let's see if padding works 10 let's try that here and see so the first thing i'm going to do here is let's add a button so this button so test is equal to add so grid dot row that is zero and grid dot column let's set to one so let's push to the other end we can have horizontal options and that's going to be end that's going to be on top then let's paste this list view so this list view there's a background now grade dot row this is one and grade dot let's use column span two to span across the column because you know here we specify two options here so two columns here here we join them together to set okay now you see we have this button but where is the list we are not having the list we have auto 
first row this is the first row the button it is row zero second row we have this auto here and that's a row one so this is row zero row one column span two this column span one so let's see save this all right so we have this add we have this add button here but we are not having this list view so we have two rows this is the first one row zero and that's it row one right okay all right so let's see let's now as you know we have this grid and that is auto auto so we can set here a star star to make it work or we can decide to set it at 70 and 30 so you can set it as dot 70 and here dot 30 we have row spacing here and this pattern we have pattern here and a margin so uh, with the list view you can see we have also margin here so let's set let's clear this margin let's save this and now let's run it yeah so you can see we have this and we have this button so as soon as I click on this you can see it navigates to the edit page go back and that's an ad so this ad this button that we have here let's make it transparent so this is button this is background color and that is transparent and test color let's set test color to blue so let's save this and i want to have only this so this ad maybe if you can have border width so we can set border width to zero and now when you save this you can see we have border width at zero okay now let's give this button name okay so this button you say x name and that is add or btn add to btn add so btn add contact now let's form an event that is clicked click event generate new handler and now let's go to this main page the cs file you can see we have it over here and now let's navigate so we say shell dot current dot go to async and you can pass in name of add contact page okay so you can now save this and that will be all so uh, when i click on this button from the page it's going to navigate us to this add contact page that is where we can add contact so you know the add contact page when it come there we are rendering the control contact control that's a view and when the save button is clicked we populate it and i'll send it called the repository and get the add method so let's click on this so add and then let's see if it's going to navigate us to all right let's stop this let's run it again and see okay so it is now loaded now let's click on the add and see so add now let's add one so test 
and I say test at tests.com phone number safe contact already added okay because maybe the email is already there let's see you have test as test so let's see we have test maybe you're not having the scrabble feature let's try Let, let's see all right so let's see i click on this again then let's add test once more test at test dot com one two three four contact already added let's go back there's no test here so let's see what we can let's see what the uh, problem is let's go to the repository okay so we are in here now we first check if email is found if it is not found okay so this is what you have to do if it is not equal to now instead so let's go back now let's see so test test at test one two three contact added so let's see now can we see test okay so you see we have test over here and if i click on you can see we have test so it has added but what you want to do here is after adding we want to navigate so shell.caring.go to async name of main contact page so let's specify we forgot to add an absolute path so there's an absolute path for slash two so let's save this let's add one more and see so s at x dot com then maybe so save yeah so we are back now you can see we have s over here okay so now one left here it is delete how do you delete it let's talk about that to you as well all right so you can see that from here um it's not scrolling up and down so let's go to back to you we have our main content uh, contact page and now instead of the auto we pass in 100 and let's add star we want it to fix 100 and star so let's say and you can see it is working now so let's add click to add let's minimize it so let's add the next one so i'm going to say fred i'm going to say at fred that's going maybe later on we talk about validation too then so I'll click on save so contact added done and we say this is fred so that is it now let's go to the update so how do you delete let's talk about how to delete so um i'm going to sip some water i'll come back then we move on to how to delete and that's going to be the end for this kind of operation afterwards we implement the search then we are done so now everything is set now let's go in for the delete and the search so let's go to the main page that's the demo page and let's go to the markup so while we have this list view we need to specify the context menu here so you see we have the data template here and inside data template we have the cell uh, text cell so this text cell let's perform so text cell let's open it up here like this and now in this text cell we can have also text cell so dot we can go in for context action so this context accent we can have menu accents or menu items so this menu item we want to have the first the test here let's go in for delete okay so this delete we can specify some few attributes here as well let's go for name 
so name is menu let's say menu item delete that is the name also let's set is distractive let's set it true so when using on the windows or any other platform it's going to turn red okay so that is a it means a delete that is true and um when it is clicked you want to generate new event handler and that is the event one that we have created let's specify command parameter and this command parameter we are binding it to so dot mean local dot mean local meaning to itself okay now the same thing let's specify another one the next menu item so menu item and now the test test here is let's say edit x name so menu item edit and clicked let's generate new event handler also let's specify command parameter as well and that is binding dot okay so these actions let's save this let's go to the cs or that's the c sharp code code behind file and we have them here so in this page when the late item is clicked remember that we have created the category that is is it, is it uh the repository already so let's create so var and we can say menu item so menu item so it's equal to sender as menu item okay now let's create contact so var contact is equal to this menu item dot command parameter as so model dot contact so this is model models dot contact and the next thing that we are doing here is let's call the contact repo dot delete contact then we pass in here this contact dot id because that is what we need and we are done with that the same thing applies to the click so we can grab this over here and now instead of this delete we are going to the edit so dot and that is an update update contact then we pass in this id so here now you know instead of passing this id we can just clear this off then let's call for shell dot current dot go to async then in here let's specify string interpolation let's terminate it open up and you want to use name of so edit contact page and we need to specify an id is equal to other interpolation here then we say contact dot id now let's save this and this is going to work for us when we run this now the last one that i want us to do here is to include the search button so we have the search button let's go to the main page and in here you will see we have a button and it is seated at the let's say the right side 
let's see the left so let's create a search bar now this set bar you're going to use it's going to pass it right here so set bar and now with this this search bar we can actually use only one like this okay so this search bar grade dot row that is row zero and um, grade dot column that is zero column zero also let's have placeholder and that is set contact aside from this we can have margin as 10 and maybe let's have an, a name x name the name let's let's use search bar also let's have an event handle that is test change when a test change what do you want to do you want to generate a new event so we want to call this event okay now let's save this let's go to the main page dot um code behind file now in the code behind file this is what let's grab so you say contact is equal to then we call new observable collection and here we go in for models dot contact then we can now go for contact repository repository dot then we have search contact then we need to pass in the filter so the filter that we need to pass in is going to come from here so with this let's first specify search bar the search bar okay so this search bar that we are specifying we pass in convert to search bar to the sender the argument coming in then in that you can now get the test from it so this search bar here this search bar that is the name that's then dot let's see so this search let's go to the main page and the name that we use that is this search bar so let's copy this and we need to use this name instead so so let's paste this here so we are typecasting the argument come in to sender then we use this test so we must have one here so dot let's see dot test then we can close this and terminate it okay so when we get this we are calling this uh, repository method you're going to get that a list of contacts here and what you have to do again as we did to this load method let's set the results to the list view so we come here and at the end we set this contacts to this so we can actually copy this and I'll paste it as result. Now that will be all. So let's run this. Okay, so you can see we have it set here. Now, if I right click on John, I must have the contest menu. So let's see. Let's close this. Let's run it again. All right, so it is now loaded. Now, let's see. So if I right click on John, let's go to the last one. So if I right click on John here, you will say I have edit. If I click on edit, you can see navigate to the John and let's edit it, update, save, and now you can see done. We have M. Now if I right click on it and I click on delete, deleted, and but you can see when it gets deleted, it is still there. You see it is off. But as soon as it gets deleted, see it is still there unless you click on it empty you go back before all right so let's see let's call the method to refresh the list view so we go back to the 
here let's go back to this method let's say edit contact page um, let's see so here we are adding now with this we delete it over here so with the repo we delete it from this method okay so here we are removing it over here navigate to the home page so as you can see when it gets deleted can we navigate to the home page before that let's check this page before let's go to the view code so if i click on deleted and this a repository is being called what do you want to do again let's call this method to load to load the data back again so deleted and here let's paste this save this now let's see so i right click on this delete it done and it is still there i think so because we have to refresh the page let's do this one more if not okay so you see it has now refreshed with the uh, hot load so that is it good now let's see the search so i'm going to type in g and see if it's going to work okay so you can see it is working i clear that and i have all s i'm going to have all i clear that so et exactly this can click on this and i can load like this okay so let's we can run this on the android too and see the, the the outcome and it's going to be exactly the same as you've seen over here okay so we can close this and that is it so let's see uh, we can write on the android too so we can just close this and um select this the android emulator 7 and now I can just run it over here and see so let's try that and see so it is loading let's wait So let's run. All right. So you can see it has now loaded, and as you can see, Android emulator. And you can see I have the name, the list over here, and you can you can see you have the search button as well. You can click on it, and you're gonna move back. So save contact. Now in here, you want to grab the context menu, click on it, press and hold. And I could say you're gonna have this delete and edit over here, and you can now do it. Okay, so that is it for the whole video. Thank you so much for spending this time, precious time, to be with me whilst we do um, this project. I hope you guys will enjoy it, and um, if you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up. You can also comment and share as well. Yeah. So I'll link the source code of this project under the description. So check it up over there, and I can now grab it. Thank you once again, and I'm going to catch you up in the next video.